video of our multi-video seller series, we shall look at the signing of listing documents. So a prospective seller has met with us and a decision has been made together with us as to what should be the list price and the commission for the listing. We have also computed a net sheet showing the net to be obtained from selling at that price and at that commission level. So what now? What is the next step? Here are seven points of note when it comes to listing documents. And when talking about listing documents, of course, the information we're providing in this video is valid at the time of making this video. Number one, in-person versus electronic signing. Once a homeowner has decided to sell and we know what the list price and the commission level will be, we are now in a position to either meet with the homeowner in person to sign the listing documents or in the case of homeowners who are out of state or out of the country, we shall send the listing documents out by email to be signed by the homeowner electronically. If there is more than one homeowner on the deed, then each homeowner will have to sign each document in the listing document package. Electronic signatures are now considered to be as legally binding as regular pen signed signatures. Number two, listing agreement. The most important document in the listing document package is the exclusive right of sale listing agreement. This is an agreement between the homeowner and our office naming us as the listing agents who will be taking care of the homeowner throughout the selling process to closing. The agreed upon list price will be written in this document, but that can be changed at a later point in time by the seller signing a one page price amendment form. Also on this document will be the commission that is charged to the seller and the commission to be given by our office to the office of the co-brokering buyer's agent. The topic of co-brokering has already been covered in an earlier video in this series. The length of the listing period is generally six months, so it is always our expectation that the home will sell long before that time has expired. Number three. Brokerage Disclosure The homeowner will also sign our own brokerage disclosure, which, amongst other relevant items, will disclose the administrative fee that our office charges the seller at closing. We've mentioned the fact that most offices charge an administrative fee in an earlier video. Number 4. Seller's Disclosure The homeowner will also complete a seller's disclosure, answering a list of questions posed about the home and its condition. Should the seller not have lived in the home, then the seller will sign a seller's non-owner occupancy disclosure. One of these disclosures and an HOA disclosure if one is pertinent will be signed by the buyer at the time an offer is being presented. Number five, wire fraud prevention form. The homeowner will also sign a wire fraud prevention document alerting the homeowner to be aware of the sad reality of fraudulent activity thereby making sure that the seller's funds are not intercepted by some fraudulent person at the time of sale. Number six, net sheet. The net sheet outlines all the costs associated with selling a home. These costs are covered in great detail in another video in our series. By signing the net sheet, the homeowner acknowledges that these costs have been disclosed at the time of listing. Number seven, Signing paperwork prior to photography. The signing of the paperwork is required before we can go out to the home to perform the photo shoot prior to placing the home on the market. Thanks for watching and make sure to check out the rest of the videos in this seller series.